To the joy of music. My name is Diane Bish and I would like to invite you to join us today as we bring you a program of sights and sounds of the Netherlands with music from great churches and cathedrals. Thank you for joining us. of Holland, we imagine windmills, canals, tulips, boats, art, unique architecture of houses and buildings and churches. But it is also a country of great music and historic organs. One of my favorite organs in the world, and my favorite, is the massive Müller organ of the Grote Kerk in Harlem, Holland. It is an awesome experience experience to walk into the great church and see for the first time this mighty organ rising 90 feet high on the back wall of the nave. The most renowned organ in the world dates back to 1737. As a student at the Amsterdam Conservatory for a year, it was my joy to play many of the historic instruments of Holland, but none greater than this Mueller organ found in the St. Favo Church of Harlem.
of the Grote Kerk in Harlem, Holland, was built in the year 1737. It was so famous in its day that both Mozart and Handel came to play this amazing instrument. For this reason, it is called the Mozart organ, and organists and virtuosos come from afar to experience its ornate casework and rich sound. With gold ornamentation and life-size statues, you are awestruck when you walk into the church and face the back wall where the organ rises 90 feet high. The organ contains over 5,000 pipes, 64 registers, three manuals, and pedal. A trip to Holland in the spring would not be complete without a visit to Kuchenhof, the most beautiful garden in the world. Here for approximately eight weeks in springtime, one may see and experience more than seven million tulips, daffodils, and hyacinths. Covering over 12 hectares with color and fragrance, there are more than 600 varieties of tulips.
Our musical journey, Sights and Sounds of Holland, takes us on to Nijmegen, where we visit the historical city center and the beautiful St. Stephen's Church. The history of St. Stephen's dates back to the 7th century, and the present church was consecrated in 1273 by Albertus Magnus and served as a Catholic parish until 1591 when the church was converted to a Protestant church, which it has remained ever since. The Grote Kerk, or St. Stephen's Kerk, as they call it in Holland, began around 1260, and the first tower was built in 1307. Little remains from this time. Around 1400, the nave was rebuilt, and this was followed by the magnificent choir with its ambulatory and ring of chapels. The aisle transepts and the south doorway all completed around 1560. Beside the church is a square tower with an octagonal belfry and an 18th century carillon. 
The tower and the facade of the church were rebuilt after suffering severe damage during the Second World War. The interior of the church was restored in 1969. Ludwig Koenig from Cologne, Germany built a magnificent organ here in the St. Stephen's Church between 1773 and 1776. During the centuries, alterations took place, and the organ was damaged during the bombardment of Nijmegen in 1941 when the church tower collapsed. Rebuilt by the Flentrop Organ Company, it has three manuals and pedal. 54 registers, and over 3,600 pipes. Due to the wood-covered vaulted ceiling, the organ sound is warm with a unique timbre.
Oyster Dyke is one of the most famous tourist attractions of Holland. These old windmills date back to the 1700s and no tourist or person would want to visit Holland without viewing the Kinderdijk windmills. Thank you for joining us today as we have brought you a program of sights and sounds of Holland with music from many of its great churches and cathedrals and historic organs. Thank you for joining us and we look forward to seeing you again next week on The Joy of Music.